example one. Let's take the Earth again as an example. So we can answer a certain question like this. How far, what should the height of a satellite be above the Earth's surface so that it could be geosynchronous with the Earth? So we could do some satellite stuff here. How high above the surface of the Earth Should a satellite be for it to be geosynchronous okay and then develop this problem even more. But let's start with this first. So how high above the surface so that it could be uh, geosynchronous? Geosynchronous means that it is always at the same spot on the Earth. So as the Earth is spinning, okay, so let's say we're too like, let's say this is a top of you. Okay, so let's say the satellite, so I'm gonna draw it kind of like as if it's a satellite, you know. So let's say the satellite is above LA. So as it's orbiting, let's say the or Earth is orbiting, by the time LA comes here, the satellite is going to be here. So it's always going to be above uh, a certain city, like that. So basically, the requirement is that it has to have the same period as the Earth. The Earth is spinning every 24 hours it needs to also have every 24 hours, okay? So go to the equation that we have, t squared is equal to uh, uh, four pi squared over gm times the distance uh, cubed, right? So you want the period to be 24 hours, so with that we already know, 24, hours, but one hour is 3,600 seconds squared. So that's how many seconds it's going to be squared. Now you have 4 pi squared, g is 6.67 grid times 10 to the minus 11. And then the mass, we're going to put the mass of the Earth. <clears throat> so let's see here the mass of the Earth to the 24th. 5.974 times 10 to the 24th. Okay. So now we got to take all of this to this side. This becomes 10 to the 24th, uh, 10 to the 13th. So we have here 24 times 3600 equals squared times 6.673 times 5.974 times 10 to the power, and then it's going to be 13. Divided by 4, divided by pi squared, okay, 
So we have d cubed, we have this huge number, then we got to cube root it, right? To the power, and we're going to say 1 divided by 3. So we're cube rooting that uh, num big number. So here we have the distance is going to be 4, 2, 2, 4, 2. Uh, let's change it again to kilometers. So it's going to be it's going to be 4, 2, 2, 4, 2, point six, point six seven kilometers. Okay, so 42,000 kilometers above the Earth's surface, from the Earth's surface, uh, no, sorry, 42,000 kilometers from the Earth's center. So that's measured from the Earth's center. So if the question was, what is the height of the satellite above the Earth's surface, then we subtract from this the radius of the Earth. And the radius of the Earth is uh, half of 12,000, let's see here. Uh, over here, they give you the diameter. So 12,756 divided by 2. 6,378 kilometers, the average radius of the Earth. So 42,242.67 minus 6,378. So, so that's going to be 42.67 minus 6,378. The height is 35,000. 864.67. So what does that look like? Instead of just a number, let's try to visualize that. If we divide the height by the radius, what's the ratio? If we divide the 35,000 by 6,378, we get 5.62. So if the Earth is here, uh, and this is the radius, so five times that radius. So if you want to draw it to scale, five times this. So we have one, two, three, four, five, and a little bit more. So roughly about here. That's how far out the satellite needs to be if it wants to be uh, if it wants to be uh, uh, geosynchronous. Okay, good. So now let's calculate the kinetic energy, potential energy, and we're assuming the satellite is 200 kilograms now. So the potential energy, or sometimes written as U, negative GMM over the distance D. Okay, the mass of the Earth is 5.974. And to the 24th, and uh, our uh, mass was 200 kilograms over the distance d, which we got was 42,000. Uh, 242.67, but that was remember kilometers, so then multiply that by 10 to the third. So that's going to be my potential energy. So let's do that. 6.673 times 5.974 times 200 divided by 42,000 to 42.67. OK? And then I could do the powers of 10. 10 to the third, 10 to the 24th, that's what? 10 to the 21. 10 to the uh, negative 11 is going to be 10 to the 10th. Right? 10 to the 10th. So this times 10 to the power of 10. Okay? So it's going to be. I'll express this in terms of uh, like uh, negative 1.89. Uh, and I'll have here 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. 